Hi, Libra, the white paper of Libra, which is the future um, cryptocurrency from Facebook and other, other companies, is been, it's been out for a couple of weeks now. And uh, just a few days ago, David Marcus, which is the responsible, like the, the project manager for the for their Libra project, published uh, in Facebook, of course, um, an explanation of, of uh, you know the, the the reactions this project had from regulators, businesses, and people in general. I find this very interesting and revealing, and I'll tell you what I. Think about it. First of all, why are uh, why are we talking about Libra? Well, Libra is uh, a cryptocurrency, maybe is an almost cryptocurrency, which uh, it's going to affect whatever we do in this space. Um, it doesn't matter if it's going to work. It doesn't matter if it's real. If it's a real cryptocurrency, uh, it, it's going to change things. It's going to change the perception of what we are doing as a project, like um, as you as you may know, Trips community is a um, an alternative to the OTAs like Airbnb and Booking.com on the blockchain. So it's something completely different from uh, you know a payment system like Libra aims to be. But whatever Facebook does in this space, it is going to affect us. So it's really important for us to uh, understand what Libra does and I think is really important for everybody who's helping trips grow uh, to understand what Libra is because if Libra is not a real cryptocurrency and we don't understand why then somebody else could come up with something like trips not really decentralized and and people will be fooled that, that's the one, one first thing and secondly it's just general culture in this space uh, the time has come for I guess everybody to understand what cryptocurrencies are and today I try to explain what Libra is compared to, to a cryptocurrency but let, let's dig into what what he brought it was really really interesting so he's writing this two weeks about the you know the the introduction of Libra which he calls a cryptocurrency powered by blockchain and uh, he's commenting on the reactions that people had right so first of all, let's remind one thing. It's not Facebook coin, at least in theory. This coin is, is going to be managed by um, an association of many, many companies. In Initially, it's 28. They aim to get to 100. And there's companies like uh, MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, um, Coinbase, which is an exchange where you buy crypto. And something with very few people actually notice, there's Booking Holdings in there, which is Booking.com parent company. So Booking.com got into crypto. This is so huge that I don't know why nobody noticed in the space. And probably nobody noticed because people are not really looking at crypto at the moment or a blockchain in our space yet, right? So he's saying, um, David Marcus is saying that they deliberately announced plans for Libra very early, so a discussion can, could start about that, right? Um, he says, if we truly want to have a chance to better serve the billions of people and businesses who deserve to be served by modern open financial services, this is the only way. So to, to start a discussion early on, and this is something which I, I agree to. I don't agree too much on the fact that they want to serve billions of people. Um, I think Libra is basically transforming uh, people who today do not have access to credit cards uh, into into customers. Well, he's saying this too later, so it's very open about that. It it makes business sense for for Facebook to have you know out of their billions of users um, to have all of them able to spend money on Facebook or Facebook uh, advertisers' uh, websites. So one of the first thing which you know, people complained about was like, is is Libra really a blockchain? It's not open and it's not decentralized. Who says this thing? Well, these things are said by people who know what the Bitcoin is, what Ethereum is, and it's it's really a fraction of you know the total uh, humanity in a way. Very few people really understand what decentralized means and why blockchains should be 
uh, open and decentralized. So it's not really decentralized, and the answer is basically yes, it's not decentralized, but it's more decentralized than what we have now. Like it's most more more decentralized than Visa or Mastercard. Because first of all, you can anybody can build a will a wallet. So it's like if everybody could build a point of sale in a way, or get access to a credit card without asking permission, so everybody can have it. And I have my strong doubts about it, and so it's not really clear what is what is talking about here. Uh, but yeah, it's for sure more decentralized than than Visa or Mastercard and or than any bank. And they gonna have like I don't know a hundred nodes. So yes, a hundred nodes is more decentralized than one bank. Definitely. Uh, it, it, with everything in blockchain, there's a, a thing which everybody should learn. Decentralization is it's a range. It goes from really centralized to really decentralized. So the, the most decentralized thing we have is Bitcoin. The most centralized is banks, basically, or the actual financial system. And um, it depends where you start from. If you start from the point of view of what we have today in financial services, yes, Libra is a step ahead. If you start from Bitcoin, no, Libra is just not, not a cryptocurrency, it's nothing to do with Bitcoin. So it really depends what we're looking for. So there's not a real clear answer here. And just to be clear, it is probably better, maybe better than banks. And it's much, much worse or it has really nothing to do uh, with, with Bitcoin or other open decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies. Now, the other question is, why isn't there already a charter in place for the Libra Association? Uh, well, the, it's basically saying we should have, we could have done, you know, a charter before, like set the rules. But if we set the rules, then it's like Facebook is is deciding everything. So they prefer to uh, design a system which limits the power of a single organization. So Facebook is hard, trying hard to say this is not Facebook coin. We need to do this together, uh, and together means together with other companies who can pay ten million dollars. Of course, there's a, a I mean, a bar entry entry barrier here, but that's the reason why they didn't write the rules. Um, then you talk about financial inclusion a lot, but can Libra really address this critical issue? You know, financial inclusion mean, means most people on earth do not have access to credit cards or banking, right? And Libra comes, Facebook comes out and says, well, we want to fix that. We want everybody to be able to participate, which is great, which has been the the slogan of many cryptocurrencies, you know, bank the unbanked, or as others say, unbank the bank. They'll basically make everybody have access to financial services, right? And it, the answer, the, the Facebook's answer is like, with Libra, anyone who has uh, even a $40 smartphone and internet connectivity can have access to this, to this financial world, right? And well, here they are easily, you know, they're fighting against uh, a dead giant. I mean, banks are, in terms of innovation, really, really slow. Okay, we are seeing some innovation today with uh, fintech, which is basically just um, a front end layer. I mean, an easier way to deal with the same old banking system. And we perceive this as a huge step ahead. It's much better to have an app which lets me do banking then go through this very you know old and ugly uh, online banking services and again this is real innovation and it is a real improvement on what we have today but it is again nothing to do with with what Bitcoin is because you are still keeping your money with somebody else okay again I know these are not concepts which kind of ring with most people and I kind of bet it will ring in the future, but it's really a hard sell for now. So it's good. Facebook is my money for me. It may, it's make it makes it easier for me to work, to, to pay around. Great. It's it's an advancement. Let's agree with that. Okay. Now, that's the important thing. That's where everything started making sense to me. And that's, you know, the, the scary part in a way. So... Um, let's start from Bitcoin. Bitcoin never asked for permission to the regulators. Bitcoin never opened a company and never tried to be compliant. Bitcoin said, Bitcoin, I mean, you know, the people who did Bitcoin uh, said the system is rotten 
the system is not innovating, the system is against the people, um, the system is a system of control, money as a system of control, let's do our own thing. Part, uh, starting from the fact that money itself, it's been, it's been something free forever, except from the last 50 or you know, 70 years. Basically, uh, money simply represents value, okay? So if in the past I could use gold or I could use shells or I could use whatever, even paper money not issued by governments, uh, that's the, let's say, natural state of things. Money simply represents value. When the government takes it in their hands, it, it kind of corrupts the, the features of money. Um, it's a very interesting way to put it. It's like when we finally discover that you have to separate church and state, we got the Renaissance, right? We got uh, an incredible period of prosperity and innovation in the world. Uh, in the same way, when we finally we go back to actually uh, separating money and state, again, this is going to liberate a lot of uh, good energies and, and improve the lives of uh, of many people on earth, except of course of people who control this system. So, what are your plans to engage regul regulators and lawmakers, right? Let me read this, this is important. So, the answer is, we are talking about something new, at scale, in a very regulated industry, and if this is not done right, it could definitely present systemic risk no one wants. This is why we believe in and are committed to a collaborative process with regulators, central banks and lawmakers to ensure that Libra helps with the kinds of issues that the existing financial system has been fighting. Notably around money laundering, terrorism financing and more. So careful about this, money laundering, terrorism financing and more. At the core, we believe that a network that helps move more cash transactions where a lot of illicit activities happen to a digital network that features regulated on and off ramps with proper KYC, know your customer, basically give me your passport before you get in. Practices combined with the ability for law enforcement and regulators to conduct their own analysis of on-chain activity, okay, analysis of on-chain activity, which could be seen as surveillance, will be a big opportunity to increase the efficacy of financial crimes monitoring and enforcement. We will, and more importantly, the Libra Association will, continue to engage proactively and openly with all relevant stakeholders on these key issues. Libra should improve detection and enforcement, not set this back. There you are. Now everything makes sense again. Facebook is basically saying, let us do Libra and we will help you kill cash. As you may know, there's a war on cash. It's been going on for several years and it's, it's been basically won. So governments do not like cash anymore. Cash is money transactions which cannot be monitored. So uh, they want to monitor everything we do. Every time you buy even a coffee with a credit card, this transaction is recorded forever and it is shared basically immediately with uh, several secret services and governments and uh, well it could be used against you in the future um, now you say why should they worry about my coffee purchase well your coffee purchase is not only a coffee purchase it shows where you were in a specific moment and if somebody else for instance was buying a coffee with you at the same time uh, you can easily uh, infer from you know location on your phone that you were together with this person and you know maybe in 10 years 20 years from now somebody could ask you what were you doing with this person or maybe you haven't done anything wrong but this person goes on and do some, does something wrong and maybe they're going to ask you what were you doing with this person 10 years ago or even worse than that maybe they're not going to even ask you they're not going to give you that job they're not going to give you that insurance they're not going to uh, give you that uh, lending that money because something was like suspicious and you don't even have the possibility to defend yourself um, so you don't even know what happened right um, when you combine all this data with data mining uh, very ugly things start to happen 
And as Airbnb shows continuously, and this happened a few days ago in Venice in Italy, uh, you can be the platform, you can be kicked out of a platform without an explanation. There was this guy um, who had more than a thousand reviews, super host 10 times in a row, so perfect host. One of his guests said that there was some privacy issue and Airbnb blocked the account of this host, uh, canceled all the bookings and closed, closed the account. And then Airbnb informed this guy and said, you are out. And the guy said, why? Well, there was an issue about privacy from some guests. And he said, what guest and what privacy issue? And Airbnb said, we don't need to tell you. We won't tell you. And he's out. This is called deplatforming. It's, it means you are on a platform. It could be YouTube. It could be uh, Facebook. It could be Airbnb. It could be Uber. It could be a platform you use for work. Uh, any platform. And these platforms rely more and more on algorithms doing analysis on data. And if they don't like what you're doing, or if they have suspicion, or if it's worse, if they think there is a slight possibility they could get in trouble for you being there, they simply kick you out. Okay, this is ugly and it's getting uglier. All right, and now your coffee purchase with this guy you later went on to commit some crime, or maybe met another person who committed a crime. We don't know what happens behind the scenes. This coffee purchase you've done could cost you dearly in, uh, in the long run, all right? That's just one explanation of what I wanted to do this, in this video, make you know, the whole case for, for privacy. I'm afraid it's, it's completely unuseful. We will, when you lose privacy, you lose it today and you pay for it um, years, years later on uh, down the line. We don't need to get into a dictatorship. We just need to get into a AI data mining uh, algorithms deciding who's in and who's out. Now, if, if money goes that way, so if every transaction goes through um, some system like you know, credit cards or Libra coin and you lose access to these platforms and there's nobody, nobody using cash around you, you have no way to buy anything anymore. You, you can't buy, you know, you can rent a place, you cannot buy a house, you cannot buy a coffee. You're completely dependent on other people helping you in that case. So this can get really, really ugly. And again, there's a war on cash uh, because, you know, government's kind of instincts are total control. And, um, and Libra is saying, typically saying, we're going to help you with that. Um, let us do Libra. Let, let's make this global. We are a global company. We are better than you in data collection. We are great in surveillance. Uh, maybe if you've seen one of the last episodes of Black Mirror, you understand like uh, Facebook had in that episode uh, more information about this, uh, this criminal than the police itself. So that, that's what happens. Like if you put together these companies and in governments and law enforcement, then you get the perfect surveillance state, okay? Uh, and that's what Facebook is going to use to, to get Libra accepted. It's going to play on the weakness of governments to, to make basically a, a pact, okay? I would call it a, a really evil pact, but you know, a pact. So that's, when I read this, I said, okay, now everything uh, makes sense. Now I understand why Facebook believes uh, they're gonna pull this off. And this is honestly uh, pretty, pretty scary. Um, don't think I'm gonna go through the whole thing. Uh, can we f trust Facebook to manage financial services? Uh, like, can we trust, Facebook is saying we're not gonna use this data for, you know, advertisement or other things, but it doesn't matter because this data, even if it's collected by a different, you know, by the association about Facebook itself, it doesn't matter. The data maybe won't go to Facebook. It still goes to the governments, and you know it's gonna be attacked. It's gonna be lost. Uh, every time data is lost, that we haven't found yet a way to keep we. I mean, as humanity, to keep data safe. So again, even if that coffee purchase doesn't go to Facebook itself, and Facebook won't try to sell you something, uh, it's gonna go to some agencies, and agency will lose it. It's gonna leak and. Be open for everybody to see. 
What's in for Facebook? Well, I think I've said it before. It's uh, they're going to be able to uh, monetize more of the users. They have many users. They are not able to monetize, and they're going to monetize them. Uh, yeah, but the most important thing is this. Um, yeah, we are going to help you with the war on cash. We're going to help you build a global surveillance machine. We are the best in it. Let us do Libra, and we're going to help you with that. Yeah, that's it. So that's all for, for this analysis. Keep looking at Libra. And I'm going to keep looking at, at Libra, how it goes. Let's see if I, if I read, you know, if I analyze correctly this thing. Again, this part is what really uh, makes, makes everything um, clear to me. It's, uh, they are proposing a pact and this is an ugly, ugly, ugly pact. Uh, just to end this video, um, what we're doing with trips, what Bitcoin is doing with money, it's basically saying we can do these things. We can have money and we can have bookings and we can have transactions peer-to-peer -peer without letting this go through uh, corporations who always acquire too much power on our lives. And going back to this the platforming thing where you are working for years on, on an account in Airbnb and then this account is taken away from you. Very important thing, if you have a thousand reviews in Airbnb, they can be taken away from you. If you have a thousand reviews on trips, we don't have them. They are on the blockchain. We can't take them away from you. You own them. You must understand how important it is. Let's say in 10 years you have 20,000 reviews and they're taken away from you with no recourse. I mean, can it get uglier than that? I don't think it can. If you have your reviews on, on trips, which means they are on the blockchain and your profile and your listings, everything is out of our hands. They are on the Ethereum network. They are safe. Okay? I mean, I, don't, I can't think of a more compelling reason for switching and trying to push all your bookings on an open network than that. And uh, um, I'm pretty sure I won't need to really explain this too much uh, it's gonna be clearer and clearer with things like this happening more and more uh, my only fear is that when we understand this when most of us will understand this it's going to be a bit too late all right thanks for listening see you next time bye